so Rami, uh, why don't we uh, go to our final subject, which is the uh, uh, the wild fall in the stock market yesterday as a result of a stunning announcement yeah. by a little Chinese company that up until uh, yesterday, I think almost nobody knew about. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Dimitri, do you want me to start off with that or? Well, uh, why don't uh, I can just briefly say, you mean about the stock market? Yes. Yeah. Um, just just by way of background, the, the tech stocks have been on a tear for the last couple of years, and it's been based on a lot of, uh, I'm, I think it's hype, uh, you know, uh, around AI, that AI was going to become this extraordinary new thing that was going to make gobs of money for the tech industry and uh, a lot of money pouring into companies uh, that are developing AI. Uh, the most important of which is a company called NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, its uh, market capitalization grew so much during this period that it became the largest company in the world, even bigger than Apple. And yesterday, uh, when news came out about a, uh, a low energy uh, consuming uh, AI product developed by uh, a Chinese company called DeepSeek, um, the market capitalization of NVIDIA fell by $600 billion in one day, $600 billion in one day. Uh, and um, it went from being the largest company in the world to being the second largest company uh, in the world uh, because you... Apple, yes, <clears throat> sorry, I, I go ahead. Hear, this is like a little indicator of the different industries that are publicly traded. Um, as you see, what, what, I mean, the general term for, in some way, kind of these AI companies would kind of fit within uh, these two boxes over here, which is like software infrastructure and semiconductors. Semiconductors are more or less the hardware related companies that are invested in building the infrastructure for what we should call like AI to work. NVIDIA, which started off as a, gra uh, as a GPU company, right? They would basically build um, graphic cards, which is the most efficient way of maybe processing information or so. This is a company that was valued at maybe $4 trillion um, and lost n nearly 20% at its uh, at its highest point, at, or at its lowest point on the uh, trading day yesterday. That represented around um, $600 billion lost in one day. And then we look at TSM, which is Taiwan Semiconductors. That's the kind of the manufacturing hub for these chips. Uh, they have contracts with NVIDIA. That lost 14%. And uh, when we look at um, Microsoft, the company that more or less has some agreement, some level of ownership in OpenAI, lost 3%. Um, and you've mentioned something about uh, DeepSeek being able to process uh, or to to um, to release its AI model requiring a lot less energy, even the energy companies on tra uh, trade on the stock market lost significant um, market cap uh, or value on the stock market yesterday. Vistra, which is a company that uh, provides energy to data centers and these large AI companies, uh, lost thirty percent yesterday on the stock market. So right. the AI is just pe for people who don't know is very energy intensive, consumes yes. huge amounts of electricity. Well, not for, <laughs> apparently not for DeepSeek because it was, exactly. able, to, <laughs> it was able to uh, using um, NVIDIA chips from the year 2020, right? Five-year-old chips uh, because uh, the United States has, uh, res has restrictions on the, um, on the, on the on the technologies that certain countries can use, right? So, right. The United so it's States more it's more they, they banned the more advanced Nvidia chips from being sold to China, right? Exactly. So there's this map over here about how China wants to uh, sorry the United States wants to hoard the technological um, uh, lead over the rest of the world. So when you look at this map over here, let me see if I could zoom in from my own. Uh, hmm. From my own screen so this is the united states and canada um, and then like very limited western countries here you see like finland norway sweden uh france spain germany italy uk these are the countries that have unrestricted imports so they could buy any 
um, NVIDIA chip or any chip where there's no restrictions on them. But when you look at this map over here, you also notice that somewhat friendly countries to the West are also restricted from buying um, these American products, right? These American um, uh, advanced AI chips, right? So you look at Poland, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary. Why, why is that, Rami? Because the United States truly wants to keep its edge. Uh, maybe there's there's some fear of these chips being funneled over to Russia and China, right? Because uh, they're, I mean, maybe they cannot be trusted. But uh, at the end of the day, America has put sanctions <laughs> on some of their own allies and their enemies, of course. I mean, in this case, Russia and China to not get access to the most developed U.S. technology. But the problem is that and this we've known this forever is that sanctions essentially don't work and especially not for developed industrialized countries such as russia and china because these sanctions are in some way um pushing china to develop homegrown solutions so because they were not allowed to use nvidia chips or the most advanced nvidia chips huawei is now producing their own equivalent to compete with nvidia so in some way, the United States is inviting Chinese competition. And what we've learned with DeepSeek's release, which I'll show a bit how it compares to the other American solutions, it's um, it's it's miles ahead of American technologies, despite the restrictions. So America is actually shooting itself in the foot by sanctioning China and Russia on the on the well, especially China, at least on the AI race. So I just wanted to share with you this image over here. Uh, just to maybe like kind of emphasize a bit um, what is the um, how how uh, what's it called again? Sorry, just uh, can't really multitask. Um, how Deep Seek kind of compares in in the AI world? There's kind of three model. Oh, there used to be like two, but there there's three models that are the most competitive. Um, there's Cloud over here, which is owned by Anthropic and GPT, open by this managed by OpenAI, uh, which has ties to uh, Microsoft. Then we have Llama that is owned by Meta, and the bold letters that you see here is pretty much uh, the one that's ranked the highest on some score that is, I believe, out, out of a hundred. So when you look at uh, generating content in English. Uh, and these are benchmarks that are a bit difficult for me. I, I'm not the most the, the the biggest specialist in these specific benchmarks over here. But what you could definitely see is that um, DeepSeek is outperforming Cloud and GP and uh, GPT four uh, four zero for oh sorry on pretty much all of these uh, different benchmarks. And when we look at code, which is the ability to generate code. Uh, that could be tang like that could be implemented and processed by computers. Um, the DeepSeek model is outperforming um, its comp its competitors. Now, keep in mind that DeepSeek has a team of less than two hundred people, an investment of ten million dollars, um, and has only been around for two years. Uh, in comparison. Um, OpenAI has been around for 10 years with 4,500 employees and has raised $6 billion and has access to the newest chips, has access to all the contracts it wants. It has Microsoft's backing. And in two years, this is what um, a private company based out of China was able to do, despite the heavy sanctions, despite its lack of access to the best um, hardware out there. Now, um, there's definitely challenges that Deep Sea could expect. Uh, their America is going to do whatever it can to stop Chinese, to, to remove the competitive aspect of China in the AI race. They will most likely fail, but uh, it already started. They're demonizing Deep Seek by saying that if you search, um, if you search uh, Tiananmen Square massacre on Deep Seek, it won't give you an answer. But similarly, if you talk about, if you ask ChatGPT if there's a genocide in Gaza, you'll probably get a sillier response. So when, so whenever they're criticizing the bias of DeepSeek and these, I mean, if you want to really talk about the Tiananmen massacre, 
which started off when protesters started targeting Chinese soldiers. Um, and there is probably a bias on deep sea space uh, um, side in tackling this issue, but you cannot compare the moral uh, indifference in not being able to recognize in genocide that that no less than 100,000 people were, were killed from. So when it comes to the issues that matters, we could definitely see that deep seek is much more efficient. Um, I Now, the United States will probably um, have some level of, of protectionism by not letting deep seek be used for government employees uh, or its military and all of its different agencies. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, and uh, my biggest concern here is that this is there's like different levels to the race for AI. Um, we're currently in between. There's 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 a field called generative AI, which is the ability to generate content, which is the ability to produce marketing uh, to to generate answers to questions. But there's another race coming after generative AI, which is agentic AI, which is the ability to proactively answer concerns of users. So that could be like customer agents, bots, um, or like some people call it patient care as well. Nvidia did a whole presentation about this at their uh, pres at their um, at their CES uh, keynote speech. And well, what we're noticing is that if China definitely or the Chinese tech space definitely won the race to generative AI, we could only imagine that the future AI races and the future technology races they will also win them. So whether it is the next upcoming one, which is agentic AI, we could only anticipate that there's someone in China working heavily in stealth mode that is going to outperform anything we think is leading right now. And then similarly after uh, agentic AI, it seems like the race is gonna be for robotic AI. So it's gonna be building physical robots that are able to solve physical solutions for uh, problems, sorry, for, for individuals. So, my question here is that over the last three, four years, we had the war in Ukraine. The war in Ukraine has shown us that uh, America doesn't have the best weapons in the world as they made us believe as soon as they were stuck in a, in a war uh, with a, with a, with a evil, even playing member, right? Russia, we've seen that Russian weapons are just as strong if not stronger in many cases. We know that with the genocide happening in Gaza, the uh, this facade of Western moral superiority has also been shattered. And more recently, we noticed that America's facade of technological advancement and development and pioneering is has also been crushed by China. Now, there's this thing called American exceptionalism, which tells us that America could invade Iraq for the greater good of humanity because it will bring us closer to having democracy around the world than allow us to develop our industries and all live more peacefully and live more comfortably in the West. Now we've known that their army is bad, sorry, their weapons are weak, their technology is shit, and their morality is, 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 has been exposed, right, in Gaza and Vietnam and beyond. So um, if they're going to destroy the rest of the world, at least be good at something, and they're clearly not doing anything good in the whole technological space. So the deep seek, uh, victory over the United States is showing us uh, truly what are the where where how far we how far we've gone in the West and and how that gap is is uh, getting bigger between us and China um, and just to end this um, BYD which is uh, in North America we most likely don't really know them but it's an electric electric car company it's the biggest producer of electric cars in the world. Uh, they've recently built a car under $15,000, even with 100% tariffs that we have in North America, it is still the cheapest electric car in the world. Wow. So, so and, it, and it probably has far greater range oh, than, any, than any Western-made EV. So this uh, illusion of American exceptionalism is completely shattered, completely yeah. shattered. Yeah. So, it's, it's, it's amazing, Rami, you know, it's like wherever we look, we see uh, Western power in decline. Uh, and uh, for those of us who live in the West, as we do, uh, uh, the most distressing thing about it is there seems to be nobody at the helm who has a, a serious idea about how to arrest that decline. 
they just, uh, the people who are running the show become increasingly desperate, increasingly depraved in their behavior, um, and uh, are utterly uh, either unconscious or indifferent to how their behavior is perceived by people in the non-Western world. Um, in any case, the one other thing I just want to, before we go to the Q&A, Rami, just ask you to comment upon, the founder of Deep Seek, Yang Wenfeng, uh, reportedly told the Chinese media that, quote, AI should be affordable and accessible to everyone, close quote. Do um, you think this is a philosophy that's shared by the uh, leaders in AI in the Western corporate community? Oh, definitely not. Um, I think societies are designed and engineered to become what they are um, in a sense where if it costs us uh, $6 billion to develop AI, as we've seen the way open AI has been doing it, it's because it's intended to be used only by the select few. And in China, they're democratizing it by making it cheap and affordable for everyone. And I've been reading a book called The East is Still Red by Carlos, oh, I'll have to uh, forget the last name. But uh, the whole purpose of the book is to talk about what is the Chinese uh, how is Chinese economy structured and how is it built to work for the workers and for, um, yeah, the working class people. And in 1978, there was this kind of liberalization of the economy that allowed foreign investments to develop uh, industries in China. And it came as a caveat that any foreign investment had to allow the technology to then be used for the greater good of Chinese people. So we saw how Boeing opened up factories in China to produce planes, and that came at the expense of, let's just call it cheaper labor in China. But that also opened the door for China to start producing planes. And now it's up there and outputting uh, in its production of Chinese planes and, um, and beyond. So this investment that China has done over the 1970s, we're now seeing the fruits of that today. All of the factories that were implemented in China to take advantage of cheap labor, we are now seeing that China took the lead into owning these industries, competing with the West, and bringing costs down so that we could all benefit from it, right? Mm -hmm. So I believe OpenAI's uh, plans where you get access to the best features and at the enterprise level, you could look at a bill of around like two, three hundred dollars a month. The free plan on DeepSeek brings you just as much value, if not more. Right. So, so this is the vision. I mean, and this is, I'm not trying to praise China for the sake of praising them, but this is the reality on the ground is that their products are accessible and tangible to everyone. When you go around the world, you'll see people who cannot afford, you know, let's just say iPhones or whatever expensive products that we sell in the West, they all have Huawei's, um, uh, uh, Xiaomi and other Chinese brands that are there to democratize commodities, goods that bring that that actually benefit society. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think this is the way societies are designed. Um, the West is based off of, I mean, the United States is a society that was implemented off of slavery. It has evolved into its current form of imperialist capitalist society that is today. And on the other hand, China is a country that has uplifted over a billion people off of poverty, that is pioneering right now in, 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 in AI. And I saw someone in the comments saying nuclear fusion in the aerospace industry. So if we really want to talk about who's a driver of good for humanity in the world, and I mean, I spoke earlier about American exceptionalism. There's really nothing exceptional about them when we see how China is really outperforming.